It is difficult to know where to begin with my old friend Michelle because we go back quite a ways. We were just kids <laughs> when we first met many years ago under the wonderful wings of Nina and Charlie Bradley. Well, they had the uh, Leopold Fellow Program when you and I were graduate students in Wisconsin, and I applied as a botanist, and another woman applied as a hydrologist, and hydro hydrology was Charlie Bradley's field. He was very excited by her and not so excited by the botany, but Nina, of course, loved the botany. And then when I got to add to the herbarium, which Luna Leopold had started, uh, that was like adding to history or something like that. It, if you're a botanist and you're pressing plants for an herbarium and you see these old specimens, it's, it's sort of like seeing the family when they were out there collecting and planting and everything. We were creating, even though we didn't know it and we were the young ones then, we were creating a community and drawing upon the community of the land and of their family tradition and of the other human stories in that landscape. I hadn't thought of it actually until you just said that, that we were in on a community rebuilding itself. I like what we talked about this weekend about the human community and the, our reciprocal community with the land and how they have to be synergistic and work together at the same time. And I think what Nina and Charlie taught is how to be kind and build community. And I've seen you, Kurt, really building community through this movie and knowing a lot of people and then getting people together. And I know my goal is to be, build as much community to help my students come into the in, community of the future in the environment. Michelle, one of the projects you've been most devoted to, and I know how important it has been to you, is your work with Hema Mesopotamia, working especially in the area where the Marsh Arab culture in Iraq was really d destroyed and how significant the efforts are now to try to bring back that community. So tell me a little bit about Hema Mesopotamia and the work you're doing. Well, I started out at, in working with Hema Mesopotamia with Azam and Susie Awash on Nature Iraq, and I was the first project manager. And after th things opened up um, to go to Iraq, they invited me to go there, and I turned them down both because my elders in the Indian community told me not to, and because I felt like Iraqis should have those jobs, not Americans. But somehow, the, all these opportunities kept coming along. I kept writing, researching, and then I was invited to Basra at a rather dangerous time right after the war as a keynote speaker. And it was very interesting to be taken into the country with armed guards, with guarded with a tank, um, having just complete security around me. And then I finally got to go out into the marshes. I got to see a Mesopotamian soft-shelled turtle. And uh, they asked me to help them. They asked me to help them because the water was being cut off from Turkey. So we did a conference in Barcelona, and that's when the idea of Hema Mesopotamian, the nonprofit, was born. Um, then I went to Turkey, and I traveled through Turkey and went with environmental groups there and saw how the Kurdish people were suffering, where the dams are being built, and how much the Kurdish people love water and, and the land, that they have their own land ethic. Uh, all through the watershed in different flavors, there's this strong land ethic between the people and the care of the land. The interesting thing is Leopold's quotes are often Christian. Some of his writing is from the Bible, and, yet, and this was the land of the Abrahamic religions. And in those Abrahamic religions was this sense of Hema, or land stewardship, which is exactly what Leopold was writing about, which is care of the land, care of the commons, this care of the land for the community. Uh, so th that was remarkable to me to discover that in a completely different culture, there's still this same feeling of the importance of humans and their care for the land and the lands then care for them. We really can see the land ethic evolving within a thinking community. I see the concept of a land ethic changing for me personally and that often they say the stool of sustainability is three-legged, that it's 
so social justice, environmental integrity or biodiversity, and sort of economic stability, but I would add a deep sense of spirituality. So I think that's sort of a, a, a common thread where Leopold talked about his meat from God. That was always really extraneous to me. But now I'm starting to think of what that means and how it would unite with what Native Americans think. What is meat from God to Aldo Leopold? He's a hunter. He goes out, he takes, he watches the animals, the range, the wildlife management. He, with respect, shoots the deer and then he eats the meat. That's one way of being uh, a manager of the land and, and the meat from God. So the other ways of being meat from God in the native culture is just really being grateful for what we have, of noticing it, of paying attention to it, of recording the phenology. To me, recording phenology is a sacred act because what you're doing is recording God's creation in another way, a loose way of saying God, not a specific way. So um, I'm adding more and more this sense of uh, community also, including a spiritual path for me. The practice is Buddhism, but trying to always be compassionate and honest and, and being my word. So that's my part of being an elder in the community now rather than a child. Um, also nurturing and supporting other people. It's like Christmas when you're a little kid. You want all the presents. Now we're grown-ups and we think of what we can give to the world and what we can give to other people. Leopold's gift was his writing, his thoughts, all the students he had, his family. So he radiated out in the world. And I think you and I are trying to do that in our own way of radiating out community building, community to the people around us, to this wonderful central core of people we met with this weekend who can build us and support us and then out in the larger world where they really need our voice to support them and listen to them. Gary uh, Nabhan, in a book, Arab American, used the phrase deep listening. And part of deep listening to me is also writing or translating what you hear so other people can listen with you. And so I think maybe our work is deep listening to the environment around us as it's changing through climate change to the people around us who are gonna be changing and often suffering deeply from climate change. It's like we've come from being children and students to being the ones who need to hold the basket for the community because there's gonna be a lot of change and we have to be the ones who are holding it. And we have models, we had Nina. Nina showed us how to be what we need to be um, for our community, our community of all our relations, our community of people who need us. We're all important. So I'm just gonna finish off for myself by saying thanks, Michelle, for being here for the last few days, for sharing your stories and experience and your hopes. Thank you for such a wonderful, for being you, for being in my life, for being an inspiration to me.